In his book on Ephesians, Watchman Nee observes that the letter can be divided into three movements. Sit, walk, stand. That's the name of his book. In chapters 1 to 3 of Ephesians, we are seated in Christ in the heavenly places. In chapters 4 and 5, we then walk worthy of our calling out into the world. And in chapter 6, we finally stand against the assaults of the evil one. Sit, walk, stand. And the order is important. First, we learn our true position in Christ. We've been raised in Christ and forgiven and adopted and we're beloved and we're inheriting the cosmos. As we sit in those truths, we then walk out into the world together as church and then we learn how to stand against Satan's attacks. Um, the order is important. As far as Watchman Nee was concerned, all our problems in the Christian life stem from a failure to appreciate our seatedness. When we try to walk before we have sat, we fall down. We might imagine that Christianity consists of performing certain duties or cultivating certain characteristics, yet our new life really has been given to us in Jesus. Our first job is always to sit in God's gospel truths and then to walk them out into the world. So in the letter of Ephesians, as Paul turns from sitting to walking in Ephesians 4, I wonder what you think the first thing is that he should address. Well, actually, what he, what he discusses is church life. The Christian walk is a walk together. And how are we meant to live together? Well, uh, chapter 4 verse 15 says that we are to constantly speak the truth in love and then we will in all things grow up into him who is the head, that is Christ. It's our speaking that really needs addressing if we're going to walk together into the world. In verse 29, Paul talks about unwholesome talk. In verse 31, he exhorts us to put away slander. Uh, so, there's all sorts of problems with our words if we're going to walk together. And he really puts his finger on it in our verse for, for today, verse 26, when he says, Do not let the sun go down on your anger. As we walk together, Paul is aware that anger will be a real problem for us. And it's interesting, if we're not tempted to daily anger, maybe we're not walking closely enough with our brothers and sisters. Paul says that to address our anger is absolutely vital. So he expects us to be rubbing each other up the wrong way. But he says, address it daily, address it frequently, address it quickly. Don't let the sun go down on it. Don't let a day pass without seeking resolution and reconciliation. Don't let anger have the last word in your day. Why? Because God's last word is not anger. God's last word is reconciliation. Notice how Paul grounds all our human acts of reconciliation in God's great reconciliation in Christ. He says, verse 31, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, or walk in love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Sit in that truth. Christ has loved us and given himself for us. We are at peace with the living God, though it cost him everything to reconcile with us. Now, having sat in that truth, now walk by that light. Are there people you need to reconcile with? Don't delay. Don't give it another day. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. Music